Hey guys, this is Sarah and Matt from Amateur Filmies and welcome back to a new video. In this video we'll be going over our media book collection, which we have a decent amount of. Um, they're relatively new to our collection so we wanted to showcase them and see what you guys think, so hope you enjoy. So as we touched upon in our previous Blu-ray haul video, we were in the process of um, gathering a lot of films from another collector who's selling off his collection. And some of the stuff that we bought off him was this uh, media book collection that we're about to show here today. I don't have a lot of knowledge regarding media book releases and whatnot. I'm pretty sure that these are all from Germany. But if I am mistaken, definitely point it, point it out to us because, uh, as I said, I don't really know a whole lot about the you know, the origins of these releases. So as is usual for our collection overviews, we've seen most of these, but there still are a couple that we're yet to get to. And this is one of the ones that we haven't seen yet. And that is Galaxy of Terror, which I absolutely love the artwork on this. And you'll be hearing us say that quite a lot for these releases because the media books just look absolutely fantastic. With Galaxy of Terror, I'm really keen to watch this one because I, init I initially got introduced to the film when Screen Factory put out the steelbook of it, which I was actually planning on getting it for a long time, but then when I saw this release, I'm like, I'm happy to stick with this one for the time being. Um, it looks extremely cheesy. I actually did put it on yesterday to start watching it, but I ended up having to do something else, and it looks, yeah, right up my alley. Very low budget, at least that's what it seems from the first 10 minutes. And yeah, I can't wait to actually sit down and watch it. I don't think this would be the type of one that you're into, though. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> so then we have The Boy. As soon as I saw this media book, I knew we had to have it. It looks marvelous. We'd actually watched it recently with my sister uh, because we wanted to look for, you know, like sort of a pretty modern sort of cheesy horror. And this one, it didn't disappoint. It was pretty basic in terms of its plot, I guess, but it has a really good twist. And in terms of modern mainstream horrors, this one works pretty well. It has a really eerie atmosphere and the setting's really quite creepy. I think this is a pretty serviceable horror movie. It's nothing too special, but you know, it's okay, and I am interested to see the sequel that came out, I think, this year. Uh, I haven't heard great things about it at all, but I am still curious about it, so if you've seen it, let us know if it's any good, although I don't expect to hear the greatest of things. I should also mention as well that a few of these media books are released by the same company, so for example, this one about the show is from NSM Records, and we have a few here from 84 Entertainment as well, but this one here is explosive but i'm pretty sure it's actual english you know or western release name is blown away this one came out in i think 1994 and it stars jeff bridges and tommy lee jones and it's a really really generic sort of just action movie i don't mind action movies and i wanted to give this one a go especially because i generally do like tommy lee jones but yeah this one was just extremely generic and i also read that he act jeff bridges turned down the lead role in speed the one with keanu reeves oh to do this movie and after watching this one i have to say it was a pretty big mistake extremely forgettable in my opinion not necessarily recommended although i know that your dad said he really likes this movie so i'll let the words of dr reed will sum up my thoughts on this one pretty standard really we have swamp thing I'm not even going to try and pronounce the German title to this. <laughs> but we mainly wanted to get Swamp Thing because it is a Wes Craven film and, and obviously it's based on the DC character. And it also stars horror legend Adrian Barbo and Ray Wise as well. Mm. We're not really sure what to expect from this film. It probably will be a bit dated, but yeah, we want to check it out, especially considering it is a Cra Craven film and a creature feature will never pass up, you know? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So this next film is called Parasite. And I can assure you that it is not the one that came out last year and won all the Oscars. <laughs> uh, I should also say as well, it's probably clear from the B-roll footage that we've been showing, but a lot of these media books are also ultra limited. Was, this particular edition was limited to 222 and we got number 121, which I thought was quite impressive. You know, like when you, you get a, you know, a hot, cool looking horror movie based on the cover art and it ends up being that the cover art is the best thing about the entire movie. Yes. <laughs> this movie was really really bad <laughs> it was it was actually terrible it's actually got demi moore i think it's one of her first movies ever and just the acting in this and just the production is just absolutely terrible it was kind of enjoyable in the sense that i did end up watching the majority of it with uh, some members of sarah's family and we had fun sort of just picking at it a little bit but i just if, even if it just amped up the gore a little bit there was only i thought it was gonna be a lot more gorier than it was 
and it just didn't really deliver on that. Again, I love the cover art, and you do get a lot of cool, like, goodies inside. Like, you get some um, 3D glasses, which I did not wear when I was watching it, but maybe if I rewatch this in the future, maybe we'll add something a bit extra. Possibly. <laughs> uh, either way, it's a cool release for a not cool movie. <laughs> we have The Faculty. I really love this media book as well. As soon as I saw this, I snapped it up. But this is a childhood favourite of mine. I've always loved this film. Rewatching it recently, we realised how cheesy it was, but it doesn't stop us from loving it nonetheless. I didn't realise how many 90s icons there are in this film. I mean, Usher is in it, and it's also directed by Robert Rodriguez. So if you want a really good sci-fi horror, you have to watch, out, watch The Faculty. Even though it's a bit cheesy, it's definitely worth the watch. And the effects are actually quite good for the time it was made. I like how when you're talking about 90s icons and like, you know, famous actors, instead of mentioning Elijah Wood, Josh Hartnett, Jordana Brewster, or any, any one of those, you go with Usher is the prime example. <laughs> well, he's in it. <laughs> <laughs> he is in it, but I don't know if that's going to sell people in the faculty if they haven't seen it. Although most people, I reckon, by now have seen the faculty. And if you haven't, you really should check it out because it actually is really good. Also, we forgot to say, sorry, Parasite and the faculty were released by 84 Entertainment. This one I'm about to show is released by NSM Records. This is Firestarter the Stephen King horror movie adaptation. Now I've talked about in the past how much I love Stephen King, his works, but also his movie adaptations. But surprisingly, this is actually one that I haven't gotten around to watching yet. I've always known about it. And my mum, you know, for, like growing up, she would always reference this movie in the book as well. And yeah, I'm just excited to actually finally have it in my collection so I can actually say that I've watched it. I've heard pretty good things about it. I think it's one of those, another sort of middle of the road adaptation because as a lot of you guys know, obviously Stephen King movie adaptations so you generally either Hit really good, <laughs> really good or really, really bad. But you know, I think this is sort of considered middle of the road as I said. So I'm, I'm expecting decent things from it. I'd never heard about this movie until I watched the Netflix show Insatiable. Oh, right. And they reference it, and I think she like burns down a hotel room <laughs> in honor of True Barrymore and Firestarter. Oh, right. I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's it's a cool reference. Irrelevant, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Another one from NSM Records. It is Alien Nation. I hadn't actually heard about this film until Matt bought it, and it's really interesting. It's about an alien civilization who assimilates into human society in like the 90s LA and the plotline sort of reminds me a little bit of the Netflix movie Bright although that is a big call because I haven't seen either <laughs> <laughs> but I know uh, Alien Nation features James Kahn mm. and he's a pretty revered actor so it'll be I'll be interested to check this one out I'm not usually a fan of sci-fi but this one is supposed to be pretty decent so next up we have a film for all the way back from my childhood this is <laughs> The Wanderers and this one commonly gets mistaken with the Warriors, and understandably so, because it is about gangs and gangs fighting other gangs for, you know, territory and re reputation, blah, blah, blah. And I think they even came out even in the same year. But they are quite different as far as, you know, the tone of the film and, you know, what transpires in the movie. I do prefer the Warriors. But this one feels like it has a lot more, when I say a lot more heart, I mean literally there's, you know, there's more romance in this movie. It feels like there's more, more things at stake uh, emotionally speaking there's a lot more investigation into like the relationships between the characters in this movie whereas the warriors you know they were already a tight click from the get-go and all the way through to the end as well the warriors is a lot more basic but i think it's still a bit more engaging it's actually quite a fun movie again i haven't seen this movie in such a long time but i used to watch it a lot when i was younger and yeah it'll be good to revisit this one i think knowing you i think you will probably like this one a bit more than you liked the warriors also from nsm records we have offspring we really wanted to get this because it is the movie that preceded The Woman. We really love The Woman. It's extremely dark and the way that the plot unfolds makes you very, very angry. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> There's so many hate, like, hateable characters in that movie. A lot of uncomfortable scenes as well. Oh, absolutely. It's not one f if you're f for the faint-hearted, pretty much. So we're hoping that The Offspring sort of has that similar vibe. I know that it's about a the last of a cannibal clan and it features Pollyanna McIntosh in the same role that she plays in The Woman. So yeah, we're really interested to see that. I know it's not supposed to be as good, but yeah, we'll, we'll see. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be alright. This next one is a horror film from 2015, I believe, and that is Howl. Uh, this one was actually a pleasant surprise. We had read before watching it that it was actually a direct-to-video release, and halfway through watching it, I was actually quite surprised that that was the case, because it felt like, it felt really, really well put together. It felt like they had a decent budget with such like a unique set, 
And while you can sort of tell towards, you know, the later parts of the movie that it, you know, it is a direct to uh, video release, I still think they utilize their budget and their, and their actors like really, really well. Basically it's set on a train um, that where, you know, the passengers are on a train and it breaks down between two stops and then they get ambushed by werewolves. <laughs> which isn't necessarily a spoiler. I mean, it is called Hell after all. <laughs> but, you know, the acting in this is actually quite decent. It's got, I think, Ed Spielers is how you say his name. He's the guy who was the lead actor in Aragon, which I'm still recovering from, from watching. Um, you could, there were some things in the writing that did bother me a little bit, like, for example, a character's death, which I'm not going to spoil, obviously. It was totally preventable if he had just acted like a proper, <laughs> like acted with some rational thought. <laughs> And, you know, like towards the end of the movie, the more that we saw the werewolves, the less sort of scary they became. Although the yeah. first werewolf that came onto screen, I actually oh. quite found it, I found it to be really, really creepy. It was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, I can understand why some people might think it looks a little bit cheesy, but to me, the ones that look like more humanoid, because this mm -hmm. one isn't just like a straight up like animal werewolf, this one's like very clearly part human. I don't know, it makes it really, really creepy. But yeah, I think the gore could have been hand up just a little bit. I don't know if there were limitations in that department, but overall, a really, really decent werewolf horror movie. If you're into that sort of subgenre of film, I highly recommend checking this one out. Yes. It does have its limitations, but I think it, it did the best that it could with, you know, the presumably lower budget than normal. We have Dead Set. And this is a mini series technically, but it sort of plays out like a like a long movie. It goes for about two hours and ten minutes. And it's set around the Big Brother house in the UK on a TV set. Uh, and I think it's finals night or something. And a zombie outbreak happens and the set is overrun with zombies. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny because the housemates aren't aware of the impending apocalypse, but a production assistant manages to infiltrate them and try and to you know to try and save them and try to tell them what's going on and the movie it, it starts off pretty funny and pretty light-hearted and then it goes really dark very quickly from the way that the zombies move it is very intense they're sort of reminiscent of you know like 28 days later type of zombies and it really ups the ante in the mini series if you're a fan of the zombie genre i highly recommend this one it is definitely worth your time. So this next one is Monkey Shines. And this one's directed by George Romero, which is pretty much the main reason why I wanted to check it out in the first place. So while this movie, you could technically just easily sum it up as being a killer monkey movie, it actually is a lot deeper than that in my opinion. Basically the movie's about a guy who becomes a quadriplegic after an accident and his researcher friend gives him a monkey that's been trained to like help him around the house. But unbeknownst to the main character, his friend has actually been experimenting on this monkey. You know, if you've watched a lot of killer animal movies, you would think, okay, so he's been the monkey's been experimented on. He's probably been injected with some serum, and now he's going to go crazy and kill everyone. But it's actually that's actually not how they go about it. So the way they approach dealing with this monkey, and it's you know the way that it ends up acting out, is that the monkey ends up forming an almost sort of symbiotic relationship with the main character. Now the main character he goes through a lot of emotions stemming from this accident. He feels a lot of sadness you know, guilt and just anger as well. And the monkey named Ella is sort of acts as like as a receptacle for these emotions and acts out on these almost animalistic urges and drives that are within the main character. Things that, you know, not only can he not physically act upon them, but if he was able to act upon them, you know, they might land him in jail or, you know, stuff like that. Like things that are really sort of taboo. I know I'm being a little bit wishy-washy with how I'm summing up this film. It is a hard movie to sort of like explain in just a couple of sentences, but I will say that it is a really unique take on the sort of killer animal subgenre of horror. I think it was a really well made, put together film. Overall, I would recommend it, especially, you know, if you're a fan of George Romero. I think, you know, if you're trying to go through his filmography, this is one of, you know, it's a decent one. I know, like, some of his later filmography is a little bit questionable, but I think <laughs> this one is actually quite good. So, yeah, overall, I do recommend it. It's not his best, absolutely not his worst, though, either. We have the Amityville Horror, and this is the remake with Ryan Reynolds, not the one with James Brolin. And this one is a definitely a bread and butter sort of 2000s horror movie. It's really good. There's some really good jump scares. The only thing I would say about it is that when it's sort of exploring the background of the horror, it gets a bit sloppy. Like there's some horror sequences that feel a little bit out of place for the movie that it is. Another issue I have with this film is the way that they work with Ryan Reynolds' character and make him sort of descend into madness feels very hasty. It feels like in, in one scene he's really nice to his stepkids and then all of a sudden he's snapping at them. So I feel like they didn't handle that too well, whereas the original sort of made it a bit more subtle. But overall it is definitely like, you know, a strong 
early 2000s horror. So this next one I'm just going to show really quickly. We don't, uh, this one was, in, this was included in part of a bundle that we bought. Uh, we don't really know much about this one at all, but we still wanted to show it in this video given it is a media book. Uh, it translates to the movie Soldier Blue. Again, if you guys have seen this one or know anything about it, let us know. It's got, uh, Can, uh, is it Candace, Candace Bergen, Bergen, who Sarah has told me is, was the evil lady in Miss Congeniality with Sandra Bullock. <laughs> Um, but it's also got Peter Strauss and Donald Pleasance as well. I believe it came out in the early 70s. But yeah, in interested to check it out. It's just one that I didn't know about when we got it, because as I said, it was part of a bundle. Um, but yeah, cool addition to have. We have Sion Sono's Tag. I hadn't heard about this film until this year when I saw a video clip from it. Uh, it was a scene on a bus, and I won't go into too much detail, but it is very, very shocking. The only issue I would take with this release is that it doesn't have English subtitles. So we can't really watch it. And I'm so disappointed because it looks yeah. batshit. <laughs> yeah, it's. I was really disappointed because I put it on to watch it and I realized that it didn't actually come with the English audio option. It pretty, every single one of these except this one does come with I think it's, it's because it's a Japanese movie yeah. released in Germany. So Why would I guess, it have English subtitles? <laughs> yeah, I guess that's yeah, the natural inclination is to not include the English option. But it, yeah, a bit disappointed. Uh, I'm not sure what we will do with this edition, whether or not we'll keep it or... I don't know, but we still want to check out the movie at some point in the future, for sure. Another release with some fantastic cover art. This is the movie Leviathan. The film came out in 1989, and it has some really familiar faces. It's got Peter Weller and Daniel Stern, and I think Ernie Hudson as well. And I first actually heard about this movie, I think, on the Shockwaves podcast. Um, they're a really good podcast. They talk all things horror. But uh, I had heard that this was a decent body horror film, which I've talked so many times about now, <laughs> how much I love that subgenre. So I gave it a go. And it's quite decent. It's basically about a deep sea mining colony, or sorry, deep sea mining crew who, you know, while working, they find a sunken ship, which they quickly investigate and they bring something by accident back on board with them. I always tend to like under underwater settings in horror movies. There's something about it. I mean, it's probably got to do with the fact that I'm scared of like really open water, <laughs> but there's something about sort of, you know, underwater movies that really freak me out. And I think it's a really good, it lends itself to like really good opportunities for horror, if that makes sense. And they did utilize that quite well in this movie as well. As far as the acting, Peter Weller, the only reason I'm pointing out the acting right now is that Peter Weller, while I'm not, I haven't seen all of his films, I've seen a decent bunch and he's just acting is so wooden in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like he's just so emotionless. <laughs> like the scenes when you think he should be like freaking out or like scrambling or really angry. He just, he delivers everything. It feels like just the same way. Mm. And I know he's like, he can be a bit of a quirky guy, at least based on like, you know, his performance in like Naked Lunch. And, you know, and Robocop where he's sort of much more manufactured. I don't know. It's just, it's sort of, I thought it was a bit weird in this particular context. As far as like the body horror and the creature effects go, because there is a creature in this movie without spoiling too much again. <laughs> I think it was done quite well. So with directors who do these type of movies, they have to find the right, the right balance between showing too much of the creature and not showing enough. Mm. I think this one, this movie could have benefited from showing a little bit more of the monster in that regard. Um, and it would have, you know, added, made some scenes a little bit more memorable than just sort of relying on really quick shots where you don't really see too much going on. But overall, as I said, like if it is a decent movie, I would recommend that if you are into like body horror, sort of, you know, creature feature type of movies, which I know obviously a lot of you guys are. We have The Babadook by Jennifer Kent. I absolutely love this release and I, freaking love this movie. It's incredibly dark, incredibly bleak, and I believe I've shared my opinion on it many in multiple platforms. It's so unsettling and the stop motion animation that they use to create the Babadook is incredibly off-putting oh, yeah. and terrifying. And if you haven't checked this movie out, please check it out. I know it's very popular. Jennifer Kent has proven herself to be a very, very effective director um, especially after the nightingale and i can't wait to see what else she puts out i probably should have shown this one directly after monkey shines given that it is another killer monkey movie but this one here is shakma this one is about a killer baboon and pretty much all the praise that i gave to monkey shines and what it was trying to do unfortunately is not i cannot give the same praise to this movie <laughs> this movie is very bad <laughs> it's one of those things where i feel like the entire budget went to securing this baboon <laughs> <laughs> it's I mean they do it does have Roddy McDowell in it and you know he's he's decent in the movie but noticeably less quality than Monkey Shines. Just the acting is extremely subpar. It's very extremely B grade, like, extremely B grade. Some scenes were quite fun to watch, um, and you know it did suffer from that sort of 
you know, some scenes being so bad that they're kind of funny, uh, which, you know, that did add a little bit of coolness to the movie as well. And interestingly, though, uh, one cool tidbit about the movie is that apparently the baboon in this movie is the same one that was in Jeff Goldblum's The Fly, or Ooh, Cronenberg's The Fly. He's famous. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, he's got, you know, he's got some acting chops. Yeah, give it a miss. It's not really worth your time, but it was still kind of fun. So we have a deathgasm, a really fun uh, Kiwi horror. I actually talk about this in my underrated Australian and New Zealand horror movies video. This film is an interesting blend of horror and comedy and it features like a very uniquely Kiwi humour. I know I talk about that a lot. Sort of like think Taika Waititi humour meets sort of Evil Dead. It's some really brutal kill scenes in this film and it's pretty much about sort of a small New Zealand town gets overrun by an evil curse that turns them into demons. And this metalhead and his misfit friends must stop the demon curse before it's too late. Overall this is a really fun movie and I highly recommend it if you're a fan of the Evil Dead movies or if you're a fan of Peter Jackson's early works. This is Hardcore Henry or in this case it's just called Hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> I've known about this movie for a long time I remember I'm pretty sure the trailer for this went viral when it was first coming out like because it's mm. the, the whole gimmick is like it's a first person action movie from start to finish um, just like a lot of stunt work and like a lot of sort of John Wick style action, I think. I haven't seen the movie yet, but <laughs> from, I've heard good reception from it. Like a couple of people who I know who have seen it have said it's pretty decent. Uh, apparently, Shalto Copley's in it as well, mm. who I always I always find to be an interesting performer in all of his movies. So, you know, I've been on sort of an action kick recently, so I'm you know I'm keen to watch this one sometime soon. I think, but uh, yeah, hopefully it's good. Not too sure. We have carriers. And I watched this film coming off the high of watching the Crazies remake, which I absolutely love. And I thought this was going to be sort of a similar vibe. The, the horror meets the sort of action meets the drama. But this film was a lot more bleak than I expected. <laughs> Follows four survivors who are trying to make it through a pandemic that's wiped out a very vast amount of the population. <laughs> And the way it shows the nature of the virus and the way that it affects the human body is incredibly disturbing. And also the way that the characters handle people who are infected is like incredibly heartless. But at the same time, you can sort of understand where they're coming from in a way because, you know, survival is probably their main goal. But yeah, it's a very bleak movie, but I highly recommend it. It's up there with the crazies, in my opinion. Not as good, but still a really good watch. Another one from 84 Entertainment. Now, this is one that we were so excited to watch. This is Tourist Trap. Now, I'm very mixed on this one. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I thought it was, it had, okay, it, it was disappointing to us in a way, but the scenes that were good were really, really good. Terrifying. Yeah, like, I think the, the opening sequence in this movie in the gas station was so creepy. Like, basically about a group of people who they, they break down on, like, a stretch of highway and, you know, they seek out help from this guy. At the same time, they're being stalked by a killer who has telekinetic powers. So it's already pretty extra in that regard. But just the way that they utilize that sort of telekinesis to sort of set up certain scares, it is really, really creepy. Mm. Like very very unnerving at some scenes um in particular like for example the guy does it you know he would walk around with like a mannequin head oh and God. like the mannequin's head would like be laughing at them as he chased it it's like <laughs> had terrifying a, yeah had a lot of like really awesome ideas i just think that the thing that let it down a little bit was that there was just long stretches of just like sort of repetitive sort of not scary interactions between mm. you know between the characters and i also think that the mystique of the killer was sort of revealed you know, they, they sort of showed too much too early, I think. I think if they had kept the mystique going or a bit a closer bit towards the end, um, it would have retained that scariness. But it sort of, they decided to reveal things just a little bit too early. And up to that point, it wasn't as scary as it could have been, if, in my opinion. I, it is one that I will rewatch in the future. Like, I might like it a little bit more. It had really, really awesome positive elements to it. I just think everything else in between those specific parts was a bit of a letdown. Wish we liked it a little bit more, but it is one that we will definitely remember for those specific instances, which were really scary. So we actually watched these last two films in conjunction with one another because they have very similar themes. And while they were done in very different ways stylistically, they definitely share that same message. And so the first one is Starry Eyes. For those of you who haven't seen it, 
It's about a struggling actress in LA who signs onto a film project that isn't exactly what it seems. As she goes to callbacks and auditions, she begins to realize that in order to be successful, she'll have to pay the ultimate price. This film is very body horror laden and very dark as well. And it is, while it does have that independent sort of B grade vibe, it is effective in communicating its message. It also features some pretty brutal and gory scenes. Um, and I definitely do highly recommend this one. And the last one they'll be showing here is The Neon Demon. Absolutely love this edition and a great movie in my opinion. As Sarah said, it tackles similar themes to Starry Eyes, but um, I distinctly remember when this movie came out, people being really divided on it. And I know that the director, Nicholas Winning Refn, he is quite a divisive director, at least that's my understanding, at least of his most recent work. I don't know whether or not it was like a mismarketing thing, why people weren't so keen on this movie, or maybe it's just a you know general taste thing, I'm not sure. I do remember people saying that they found this movie to be more style than substance, which while I can see why, where they, why they might be coming from that angle, I personally disagree. I think this is a really unique, interesting movie. It tackles a lot of ideas that relate to <clears throat> the pursuit of success and wanting to be recognized for your work, the sort of toxic environments that can come with sort of the more Hollywood-esque sort of um, LA lifestyle things and the sort of lengths that people would go to be accepted in those type of environments and settings. And I think that in that respect it can be for some people uh, maybe hard to relate to some of these characters i know that i thought that at one stage but i think you can relate to sort of the more universal you know themes and ideas and the things that these people go through which is that as i said they want to be accepted they want to be recognized for their work and that sort of ambition that they have they want it to you know manifest in something meaningful for them so you can relate to it in that way I really loved the score in this movie yes. as well. The music was so experimental and like mechanical and industrial. I thought it really fit the theme of like the, the feel of the movie really well. And this the use of lighting and shadow and just the framing as well in some certain scenes, I thought it was really, really well executed. I If you haven't seen this movie in a while or you haven't seen it at all, I would say definitely give it a go because it, it is quite a unique movie as I keep saying. I would say, I would suggest that while I can see why someone might say it's more style than substance, I would say that there is a lot of substance to be found if you look for it, if that makes sense. Absolutely. Um, keep in mind, there are a lot of disturbing parts in this movie, in particular the <laughs> morgue scene was a, lot oh, more, God. was a lot more graphic than I was expecting, so maybe not one to watch. With, uh, with, your parents. <laughs> with your parents or something like that. But as I said, um, highly recommended. I think it's a great effort from Nicholas Winning Refn. And I am curious to see what he does next as well. Cool. So that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you very much for sticking around and checking out our media book collection. It was, we're really excited to show off these ones because we absolutely love the look of these editions. Yes. And <laughs> while I don't know how many more we'll get in the future, um, they are ones that I love. we love having in our collection just because of how unique they are. Thank you very much for watching and let us know what you think of these titles because we're really curious to hear your opinions on these movies. See you guys in the next video.